In today's episode I'll try to make a sea diorama on a 700 scale for Polish warship Szlonek. As a base I use styrofoam 1.5 cm thick. I cut a 20 per 14 cm rectangle out of it. Before building such a diorama you need to think about the exposure. I decided to put Shlondak on the high seats so I will not make any land elements. The ship will be placed in the middle of the diorama a little bit diagonally. I decided to make waves from aluminium foil. In order to get a good result you should first consider the conditions in which we want to present the ship and think about how the sea would look like in these conditions on our scale. I decided that the diorama would represent a rough sea in about 4 to 5 uh, Beaufort scale, which means uh, waves about 3 to 4 meters. Shaking the waves I tried to do it on the right scale. I started to glue it using Mod Podge glue. It's a very universal glue, used also for decoupage. Extremely useful when building dioramas. After drying it's completely transparent and shiny. It's used for varnishing surfaces also. It should also be remembered that at sea the waves don't always go very symmetrically. Of course, uh, general direction is maintained, however, when making a diorama you need to remember about some irregularity. After pasting the waves, I put glue on the entire diorama. I placed the whole sheet of foil, pressing it in the right places to keep the shape that I obtained earlier. After pressing the foil I cut out the necessary pieces. On the whole diorama I decided to put one more layer of glue to get a smoother surface. As you can see after applying the glue is white and after drying it's completely transparent. First I decided to put a white primer from Tamiya. This is my first diorama ever so it was a big challenge making it completely with a brush. On the internet you can find guides for the construction of such a diorama but most of them are based on an airbrush. Also starting this project myself, I was wondering if I could get satisfactory result using only the brush. I painted the base with a very thick coat so that it fills the entire surface. After drying completely, I started painting. As the main paint I chose XF17C Blue, 
which I tint with uh, acrylic thinner X20A in a 1 to 1 ratio. I applied the first layer. I didn't avoid uh, clear brush marks. Doing this again I would try to apply the paint using a sponge or a small roller. I decided to do the initial shading. Using the paper towel I gently darkened the wave valleys. I add a bit of X23 clear blue before second layer. It's a half transparent blue paint that is shiny after application. Of course with such a small amount of paint added the color will not change significantly. Applying the second layer I changed the application technique. I didn't make so strong brush movements, only tried to apply locally and uh, allow the paint to spill a bit. Forgive me that the movie quality is not great. In the next series I will use uh, other recording equipment and I hope it will be better. As you can see after the second layer coverage was slightly better. The next step was shading. By gradually adding yellow paint I take lighter shades of green. I covered the crests of the waves with such a lighter shade. Then using an even brighter shade, using a very small amount of paint on the brush, I covered the tops only. As for painting with a brush, the result was not that bad in my opinion. The next step was to apply X22 clear coat, which I also tint with a thinner in a 1 to 1 ratio. As you can see in the corner the paint started to go off because I pressed the brush too hard, so I started to apply the varnish with gentle movements, allowing it to spill on the water. After drying completely the effect was uh, quite good. Finally I used the X23 paint again and diluting it significantly in a ratio of about 1 to 4. I wanted to get such a delicate shade of uh, blue. I applied the paint mainly on the crests of the waves, which were supposed to have uh, such a color with more light. Mm -hmm. 
the effect was as follows. I think it's pretty good for brush painting. Then I decided to make a frame. For this purpose I used a wooden corner bar. Measuring the right pieces I cut them out with a handsaw. Unfortunately it was the only saw I had at home and I had to remove the handle because of using this profile. After cutting out the right pieces I bring to their edges with sandpaper. As you can see I glued three elements with wood glue, then I started painting with natural tech varnish. After mixing I started to apply the first layer. When the varnish has dried, I sanded the surface with the fine sandpaper. Then I put the second layer. After the varnish was dried, I pasted the water into the frame and finally added the last part. The time has to come to stick Schlonsack. Do you see a glue for this? and then I took care of the effects on the water. I used the mesh interior Mod Podge glue. I filled the gaps between the ship's hull and the surface. Then I started to add trace elements on the water, which the ship leaves. ship passing through the sea, especially in such conditions, would certainly leave a lot of foam. I decided to do it using cotton wool. Using these small pieces and Mod Podge glue, I built more marks on the water.
By using cotton wool in building maritime dioramas, you can get a really interesting effect. By forming it well, uh, you can make elements of natural looking splashes or rough seas. In this way, I added more effects to the ship. Using Vallejo acrylic gel I made pieces of transparent water which I stuck on the sides of the ship. It's easy to make it by putting a thin layer of saucer gel on a foil and after it dries it can be easily removed. As the waves on my scale are quite high, uh, at the sea level of about 4 to 5 degrees, the crests of the waves would certainly be covered with foam. I decided to gently paint them with white paint. To get a natural effect, you need to do it very carefully. Bearing in mind that the Mod Podge Blue after drying is transparent, I also applied paint to the trace elements that the uh, ship leaves on the water. The last stage was to make the nameplate of the ship. I didn't have an idea how to do it. I printed it on paper, I put a transparent foil on top and I made frames from aluminium tape. The effect may not have been the worst, but in the future I will definitely think about making it better. If you have any proven methods for making such plates, please share them in the comments. I pasted the plate to the frame, finishing whole diorama. And this is the effect I got. To be honest, I was very pleased with the results. I'm sure that people who have an airbrush using this technique will get a great effect and I can't wait myself to do such a diorama with an airbrush. I hope that this technique of making water will be an inspiration for others. As you can see, you can get a fairly real effect even using only the brush. This movie is the last of the entire project related to the Polish warship Szlązak. You can judge the effects of my work. And now I invite you to the next series. At the moment I will only reveal that we will change the scale to a little bit larger. However, we will remain naval ship's topic. See you soon, take care and stay healthy. Bye!